Symbolic Design and the Symbol System Project. Symbolic imagery for effective communication of concepts is at the heart of graphic design. Design efforts are usually focused on creating the quickest path to understanding between the client, with the client being any individual or group employing a designer, and the client's audience or audiences. In this phase of this course, the student is to listen and observe the lecture presentation on symbolic imagery and then explore symbolic imagery by producing a system of nine symbolic signs based on the symbol system assignment. What is a symbol? A symbol is something that represents or stands for something else. It can be anything, an object, a person, an animal, a flower, or any combination of things that come together to form some new meaning. Although this is more complex, and this conceptual approach is usually referred to as a meta symbol. That is, it is something that carries additional meaning beyond what is observed. It is the transmitter in the communication loop. What makes any mark or elaborate naturalistic rendering a symbol is the pairing of information with it over time. The persistence, consistence, and general boldness of that pairing of information greatly affects the communication power of a symbol. In the context of design, usually the goal is to create a symbol that facilitates the quick, efficient, and clear communication and understanding of a concept sent by the encoder or sender or client to a decoder, receiver of that communication or audience. When a client, the transmitter, wishes to communicate something to its identified audience, its receptor, the artifact or object that is used as the vehicle of communication will be more effective if its symbolic value is high and consistent with the audience or the receiver's understanding. Due to changing consciousness over time or even different cultural interpretations of a design, its meaning can be altered or completely changed. The swastika. The Nazi swastika, prior to its use by Nazi Germany, was a symbol that had existed for over 3,000 years and was used in several cultures and lands throughout the world. In all cases, in China, in Greece, in Germany, and India, this design represented or was a symbol for life, sun, power, strength, and or good luck. After the rise of the Third Reich in Germany and through very aggressive and persistent bombardment of the German people by the Nazi party with this symbol, the German people and much of the world got the sense that this symbol stood for greatness and power. Of course, history shows that once Nazi Germany began its process of quote-unquote cleansing the world of Jews and other quote-unquote misfits of society, this symbol for prosperity and health quickly transformed into a representation of death, bigotry, and evil. To this day, this symbol is used almost exclusively for the depiction of evil So why design with symbols? A symbol is created out of that motivation to visually represent and share the meaning being represented with someone else. A symbol connects people who are identified as the decoders or receivers of the message. Others might see and experience a symbol but will not necessarily understand the meaning. For instance, the membership of the American Institute for the Graphic Arts will know that the letters A-I-G-A -A mean just that, the American Institute for the Graphic Arts. These are the letter forms grouped together and in the context of the English language can be understood by English language designers who view the AIGA. When a symbol is used for guidance of sorts, it can become a sign. A red hexagon with the white letters STOP in the red hexagon is a sign to be decoded or interpreted by automobile drivers, and it warns them that they must cease their forward movement or stop their vehicles. Words, images, photographs, smells, and any sensed entity can stand as a symbol, and depending on its purpose can be a sign. In the case of graphic design, it is the designer's task to understand and be capable of creating symbols that visually represent identified meaning for their clients. For it is these visual symbols that convey the thoughts, feelings, sensations, and perceptions the client desires their audience to experience in order to be attracted to and trusting of the client's efforts to relate to its audience. In short, the designer designs symbols to communicate 
a visual message in as simple and direct a visual representation as possible. The purpose of the symbol could be to identify an organization or program, as in a logo, or to guide and direct identified audiences, as in the case of signs. What types of symbols are typically used? There are four main kinds of symbols, and in the context of the graphic design profession, we can now state that in many cases the design of a symbol is really the design of a logo. The purpose of a logo is to identify the purpose or mission of an individual, business, corporation, organization, group, or program to a client's identified audience. Logos or symbols for these client and audience interactions can be listed as one of these four types. Image-oriented, concept-oriented, type-oriented, and combined types, which means two or three of the previous three types are combined into one type. Designing a symbol from a realistic image. As an example of how a designer might create a symbol, observe the attached animation. This animation shows one basic process for transforming a naturalistic image into a more abstract but objective design and into a design with connotations different from what would be understood were the image presented simply in its naturalistic state. With this realistic image, we can create a transformation that at least takes the image out of its realism and into more direct communication. Presented is a photograph of an object in an environment. With such a naturalistic or at least realistic representation of the image, there is little room for projection of meaning into the image, and therefore it tends to represent what it is as observed and little else. When we remove the object from its environment, we begin to create options for the insertion of meaning that is different from its environmental context. It could now be in any environment depending on what else we do to transform this image and provide a new context. When we remove color from the image, we extract a principle of visual organization, which will again remove current realistic meaning. Now color is left to the imagination of the audience, decoder, receiver, or viewer. When we simplify the values in the image, we again move the depiction of this image toward a less realistic interpretation and toward an image that can represent something other or in addition to the object that it was in its naturalistic state. When we vary the texture of the values or begin changing the edges of the shapes that contain the values, we create an image that now begins to express some feeling or emotion. Soft edges or soft lines will tend to calm the image or project soothing feelings. Harsh angular edges and lines will create a more caustic or even violent or energetic feel. It is at this stage in the transformation of a realistic image that the personal expression of a designer can be implemented to create the connotation desired by the client within the marks that will carry the meaning that could become a symbol. To place this information in the context of the design profession, view the attached presentation of logo designs focusing just on the image-oriented logos.